Hello, welcome back to our IT Landy Magit courses. For today, we will cover uh, a new topic and it is around creating or understanding the Splunk REST API concepts. So, again, this is a high level to teach you and help you to understand the concept behind the REST API and how that works, how we can create the templates utilizing either JSON or XML or other methods. So, this is part one. Let's we move on and we'll see what we can cover. Now, what is the Splunk REST API or the concept behind it? The Splunk REST API gives you access to the same information and functionality available to core system software and Splunk web which is which also uses the API now the API function fall into one of the following categories which have different interface behavior so we have two categories either run searches or manage objects and configuration. There are some nice resources at the end of this sessions, and they do reference to the list of all the REST APIs, endpoints, and operation processing for creating, deleting, and assigning resources. Now. The REST API is organized around object and configuration resource. A resource is a single named object stored by Splunk D, such as a job, a TCP row, input or saved search. This is a bit similar to Python. Okay. Resources are grouped into collection. Each collection has some combination of resource and other collection. The API confirm to the representational state transfer or rest. So representational state transfer stands for rest architecture style a rest full architecture has the following properties separation of concerns such as data storage and access mechanism between client and server a stateless client server interaction where there is no concept of a session. Clients apply all the information in a server request without relying on a stored state on the server. Optional data caching to improve request response performance. A generalized uniform interface for simplicity. A layered arrangement for architecture components. Raised architecture components are arranged hierarchy or hierarchically where child nodes are discoverable by parents so discoverable by parents node and contain their scope of information without any reference these architecture properties align with the rest api implementation that access domain resource with corresponding endpoint using the http protocol which means your browser use the same protocol so you can use it to send API requests to the server now the URL which is uniform resource locator addressing defined as a part of the HTTP protocol request map to Splunk platform resource which identified by the URL or URI which is uniform resource identifier so quick comparison URL is uniform resource locator 
and URI uniform resource identifier. Next is very basic example for a request to a URL which will return list of the application installed on your server. Very basic example HTTPS, localhost, on certain port, services, apps, portal. So you can use the CURL and the REST client browser plugin to exercise the API. Many use cases for the REST API also involve programming languages like HTTP library. This access method provided by the Splunk REST API are limited to the following operation. Delete, that will be deleting a resource. Get, that will be getting current state data associated with the resource or child. And you got a post which create an update data including enabling and disabling resource functional functionality. Now, Client server data transfer format support number of encoding schemes. This including XML and JSON Java encoding. You can try the CURL call sequence to like a post, get and delete message. And hopefully that should basically demonstrate the typical API usage. And there are some different uh, basically semantic and supported fewer operation depend on their intent. I think that's all what I had for you for today. Let's recap what we have covered so far. So we spoke about the concept of Splunk, what is it for, how the API works, and how it's dealing with the core engine of the Splunk, like web extension or other web services or integration tool and then we mentioned few of the concepts and we mentioned examples around Splunk API REST API. Hopefully you have learned something useful and I shall see you in part two of this Splunk intro to REST API concept. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.